Bad news, folks. There could be dirt in your coffee, corn in your honey, and God knows what in your cheese. Don't be fooled by these bogus foods next time you head to the store. When you buy a bottle of fruit juice, it's easy to assume that the label on the outside of the bottle reflects what is inside. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. The Food and Drug Administration allows the name and graphic to represent the juice's flavor, but not its actual ingredients. A recent study published in the American Journal of Public Health looked at 39 juice brands marketed for children and found that while many of them contained plenty of sugar and artificial sweeteners, some of them had no juice whatsoever. That's in line with the FDA standards, sure, but the study also couldn't conclusively prove that consumers were aware of this deception. The good news is, this information will be on the label. You just have to read it carefully. Drinks that are not 100% juice will have words such as fruit cocktail, nectar, or punch, with water being one of the main ingredients. Essentially, the label on fruit juice could be lying to you, so don't be fooled by the pretty graphics. Jennifer Harry, lead author of a three-year study on children's juice drinks published in 2019, told CNN, most of the sweetened drinks say good source of vitamin C or 100% vitamin C, but they have no or little juice. A lot of them say low sugar or less sugar, but they don't say it's because there's added low-calorie artificial sweeteners in there. It's just very confusing. Climate change is coming for your cup of morning joe. In 2014, Time magazine reported a study that estimated that 70% of the world's coffee supply could run out by 2080. That's bad news for a lot of people. We're also out of coffee. <laughs> Droughts and temperature swings in coffee-producing regions already impact the global supply during some years, which leads to another problem. To recoup losses, some producers have been found diluting ground coffee with fillers. Researchers found that pre-ground coffee has the potential to be filled with wheat, soybean, brown sugar, barley, corn, seeds, and sticks. And sometimes prepare yourself straight up dirt. Oh boy. <laughs> It is next to impossible to spot the fillers with the naked eye because it's already been ground into a homogenous roasted mix. This is especially problematic for many who have allergies to ingredients like wheat or soy. It's not always producers behind fake products, though. Any coffee connoisseur can tell you that there's a big difference between different types of coffee, and sometimes suppliers will label cheaper beans as a pricier type. That led one group of researchers to develop a process to differentiate between robusta bean and more expensive Arabica in 2016. And in 2021, farmers of Kona coffee became eligible for a settlement in a federal class action lawsuit against 22 retailers and suppliers who were falsely using the Hawaiian bean's name. Most people don't spend a lot of time thinking about baby carrots, but if you did, you'd probably guess that they're regular carrots that are picked young when they're small and tender. You know, babies. But that's nothing more than clever marketing. Baby carrots! Baby carrots! Baby carrots are just normal carrots that are cut up and processed to be small and more visually appealing. First, their tops are cut off and they're peeled. Then they're cut into about two inch pieces, polished and packaged to send out to the uneducated masses. When you buy baby carrots, you're paying for the process without any added health benefits. It is much more cost-effective to buy plain old normal carrots to chop and peel them yourself. Carrots in any form are a good health food with plenty of benefits, but opting for baby carrots just means paying around twice as much for the same thing. A common kitchen staple many consumers have in their refrigerators is a shaker of shredded Parmesan cheese. In 2016, Bloomberg News did an investigation into popular grated Parmesan brands and came back with surprising results. The researchers tested grated Parmesan cheese from Jewel Osco, Walmart's Great Value brand, Whole Foods 365 brand, and Kraft. All were found to contain cellulose, a wood pulp additive that prevents grated cheese from clumping, which is safe to consume in small amounts. Worse than that, the Food and Drug Administration looked into Castle Cheese Inc. in 2016 and found its Parmesan cheese shakers, which are sold in popular stores such as Target, contained no Parmesan at all. Instead, they were filled with Swiss mozzarella, white cheddar, and cellulose. The company's president was sentenced to three years probation for that particular dairy deception. Beyond this case, there have been over 50 class action lawsuits brought against Parmesan producers, so these are not isolated incidents. The easiest way to avoid fake Parmesan cheese is to stop buying great cheese. Bonus points if you can buy a whole piece with the rind, which should be stamped with a seal of approval by the Parmigiano-Reggiano Cheese Consortium.
It'll cost a little more, but on the other hand, at least you know it's cheese. Obviously, nobody's surprised that those pink sticks of imitation crab didn't begin their lives skittering across the seabed, but imitation is cheaper than real crab meat, is made from real seafood, and tastes just fine on a California roll. So what's the worry? Well, it's the process to make all that happen that might turn some stomachs. Imitation crab is a form of processed fish called surimi, which actually has a centuries-old history in Japan. Usually made from pollock, surimi is produced by deboning the fish, washing it, and grinding it all into a fishy paste. Water, starches, and protein are stirred into the slurry before it is heated and molded into a crab meat-like shape. There's a reason imitation crab meat is sometimes called the hot dog of the sea. Depending on the brand and quality, imitation crab can also have additives, such as monosodium glutamate, or MSG, and sodium benzoate. The bottom line, it isn't going to give you the same nutrition as real crab meat. So it's good to be aware of what you're getting into before you start downing a whole pack. Whether you're trying to ditch bleached, granulated sugar for a more natural alternative or just love waking up to a pile of steaming hotcakes drenched in sugary love, you can't go wrong with maple syrup. That's why it's so disheartening to hear that it might be faked. Collecting maple sap is an art form that requires precise conditions. The nights have to be freezing, with days that rise to 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The season in New England only lasts around a month, and the sap from the tree has to be boiled down until it reaches the consistency of a nice syrup. It can take as many as 40 gallons of sap to produce a single gallon of rich, tasty maple syrup. Needless to say, the time constraints and high cost of producing maple syrup make it right for counterfeiting. On the other hand, there are two types of fake maple syrup. One is labeled as such and is made of ingredients like high fructose corn syrup, cellulose gum, sorbitol, and caramel color. You can spot those by reading the label. It will probably say table syrup or sometimes just syrup. The other type is harder to spot. Products labeled as real maple syrup that have been adulterated with other ingredients. It's reportedly one of the most targeted food products for fraudsters. Real maple syrup has many health benefits beyond being a good sugar substitute. And it's well worth it to make sure you're getting the real product, both for taste and for wellness reasons. The next time you spring for an expensive fish like red snapper in a restaurant or grocery store, think twice. There's a chance you're not getting exactly what you ordered. Fish fraud or species substitution happens frequently worldwide. That's when you order one type of fish and get a cheaper variety instead. This I'm fish. just trying to understand how, Does it... how a person can buy a fish and not know what kind it was. In 2018, the New York State Attorney General's office conducted a thorough investigation of local supermarkets buying fish at 29 unique chains and 155 locations. They DNA tested the samples and found one in four were being sold as something other than its genetic makeup. The biggest offenders were wild-caught salmon, with 27.59% mislabeled, red snapper with 67% mislabeled, and lemon sole, with 87.5% mislabeled. Inside Edition did its own investigative reporting in 2015. They ordered sushi at 25 popular restaurants in Los Angeles and New York. 68% of the time, the samples proved to be different than what was promised. White tuna was often substituted for a hard-to-digest fish called escalar, which is illegal in Japan and Italy. Escalar is nicknamed the x lax fish because, well, you can probably figure it out. Truffles are a popular, trendy buzzword in the culinary scene. Part of their appeal is their scarcity, which also makes them a prime target for food fraud. Truffle oil is the most accessible way to enter into the exclusive world of truffles, but often it's a totally fake product. Many truffle oils are made with a synthetic ingredient called 2,4-dithiapentane in a carrier oil instead of actual truffles. This molecule provides a unique, earthy aroma, tricking the consumer into believing its validity. I don't like the white the truffle oil. I mean, if it were up to me, I think they should incinerate that product. Truffles are fungi that grow underground on the roots of specific trees. Most of the time, it takes a specially trained dog or pig to sniff out the underground delicacies. Truffle locations are fiercely guarded secrets due to the risk of thieves. It doesn't help that many people are willing to spend big money on real truffles, further adding fuel to the fire. In 2014, one anonymous Hong Kong bidder spent $120,000 on two pieces of white truffle, weighing two pounds. And two years earlier, Jay-Z spent $20,000 at Alba's truffle locations in Italy, cementing the food item's celebrity status. 
Honey is a wonderful addition to just about everything. But according to one study, it's the third most faked food in the world. Fake honey comes in a couple of different forms. It can be a watered-down version of the real thing, with the addition of sugar syrup. The worst culprits use high-fructose corn syrup as its main ingredient. Real honey comes straight from the hive, and is buzzworthy because of its many health benefits. Fake honey, on the other hand, has pretty much no benefit. Like many of the foods in this video, fake honey exists because of economic reasons. It takes time, dedication, and knowledge to raise bees, all of which contributes to higher prices for the finished product. Sugar water is just the easier route. And when it comes to something like honey, it's hard for the average consumer to tell the difference. Lobster is a dish often reserved for special occasions just because it's so fancy. But nothing takes the fun out of a celebration faster than learning that your main dish is fake. An Inside Edition investigation found that 35% of lobster ordered from 28 restaurants wasn't the real thing. You order lobster, you get lobster, right? Uh, not always. One species you might get is the smaller langostino. There's some debate over whether it counts as a lobster. The executive director of the Lobster Institute, Bob Bayer, says langostino counts as the real deal, even though it isn't technically a true lobster. Then there's imitation lobster, which is usually Alaskan pollock, whiting, haddock, or a mixture. This version goes through the same process of surimi as fake crab meat. It's a legitimate food. The problem is when it's passed off for real lobster at real lobster prices. If you want to make sure you aren't getting anything fake, order it prepared simply. If it has claws, it's probably the real thing. But in soups, pastas, and salads, your chances of getting real lobster is much lower.